Hey everyone, welcome back to the X-Ring. What I'm gonna do today is I'm finally taking the six millimeter Creedmoor out to the range. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a three shot group at 100 yards. I'm gonna verify everything's good. I am gonna go ahead and get velocity data on it. And then what I'm gonna do is shoot targets all the way out to 700 yards. And then for you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the barrel out. I'm gonna put the 6.5 Creedmoor in and then I'm gonna do the same comparison, same day, same everything. I'll try to get the test done within a 30 minute time period, and then we can kind of compare the two side by side. The six millimeter Creedmoor versus the 6.5 Creedmoor. Is it worth it, is it not? What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put a Tacticam on the rear, and then like at 700 yards, we'll have like a 10 by 10 steel, and I wanna see what the recoil and recovery time is on that steel. We might have a couple other guys shooting as well, see how they do with it, and see if it's worth spending the money to move to that six millimeter Creedmoor around. So stay tuned. All right, so first up is gonna be the six millimeter Creedmoor. I've got the lab radar set up. We have a target at 100 yards. It just ran the environmentals. The temperature is 71 degrees. We're at 28.5 for the um, barometric pressure, 64% relative humidity. The density altitude is 2660. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, do a three shot group, cold bore with the six millimeter Creedmoor. Loading the bipod, everything's level. Check left, right, up, down. It is in the bullseye at 12 o'clock, which I know this thing actually shoots just a hair high at 100. It is in the same hole, 2876, 2876, 108 ELD match. Nice little three shot group, 2889. So we're pushing that 2900 feet per second velocity, but remember with hand loads, we could get up higher into that 3100 range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this data in the ke in the uh, Strelock and in the Kestrel. I'll build a profile and we'll just go ahead and start hitting targets on the way out. I wanna get all the testing done with the six millimeter before I switch barrels out. Okay, so I just shot it at 100. Remember, I've never shot this rifle beyond 100 yards with the six millimeter Creedmoor. Rather than do any more playing around, I just put the velocity, which came out to about 2880, in Strelock and I'm gonna just go straight out to 700 yards, 10 by 10 steel. Streelock calls for 4.5 mils. I am gonna dial it in because I want this to be a good, fair comparison. So here we go. Okay, so it is extremely high. So because of that, and that's a good thing, I'm glad to see that, I am about six tenths high. So let me take this down to four mils at 700 yards and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's an impact at 700 yards. Okay, guys, so the easiest way that I could think to come up with a test is I'm going to do it myself, and then I'll have someone else get on the rifle. So I'm going to have Jeremy. He'll jump on it as well, but we're going to do three rounds as fast as you can at 600 yards. Now, the 600-yard target is a very small target out here. It's about uh, one and a quarter MOAs. It's somewhere in there because I think it measures just under eight inches and it's at 600 yards. It's a little small round. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with the bolt open. We'll have a shot timer. I already have the dope dialed in, data on previous engagement of three mils. This is a really hard target. But what I wanna be able to do is do three shots, three impacts, four time. You're gonna start with the bolt open. You can be behind the gun and as soon as the buzzer goes off, you close it. And barring any malfunctions, because this magazine is actually a training mag, it doesn't feed all the time, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll try to record it on the screen, and we'll see what it looks like. So, Jeremy, all you're going to have to do is hit that start button, and when you do, it will beep. But let me get behind the gun, let me get settled in. Hand wrapped around the grip. Wrapped around the grip, bolt open, ready. Stand by. Impact. 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 Impact.
So that's three rounds at 600 at 7.23 seconds. 7.23 seconds. I will tell you guys, shooting this out of the 6.5 Creedmoor, I've shot that enough to know that is hard to hit with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, you guys can see the recovery time. The Tacticam did record that. So now we're going to put Jeremy on the gun. We'll see how he does with it. Stand by. The cam is recording. Is the shooter ready? Shooter is ready. Stand by. Eight point one seven. Those are some smoking speeds, guys. Um, I got him by a little under a second, but you got to realize this is his first time ever shooting that. And so, Jeremy, you shoot 308 primarily, and you shoot them well. First impression, shooting that rifle in the 6mm Creedmoor, as far as recovery time and everything else. Effortless. Effortless. This is my decision. I'm trying to decide. Is that 6 five? Because it recovers so fast on target is what I'm noticing. All right, so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go over to Rick, who's shooting a 6.5 Tika, and we want to time him the same way. He's going to go ahead and get his dope, make sure he's making his impacts, and we'll see what his time is, see if he can run it pretty quickly. So much pressure. Okay, guys, so we have Rick with the 6.5 Creedmoor and the T3AXA1, or T3XA1, rather. Is the shooter ready? <laughs> go ahead and get on, but your bolt has to be open, open position. You can only have three rounds. You must have three impacts. Guys, this is in 6.5 Creedmoor. This is just keeping me from having to switch that barrel out at the moment. All right, let's try this disaster. All right, shooter is ready. Stand by. That would be a miss. Hit. He's at 10.8 with one miss. Let's forget the miss. We'll give him that. He's about two and a half to three seconds off the pace on that 6.5 Creedmoor, and I think it's the recovery time. This is where you're going to make those, that time up. Do you think I, you can run it faster? Yeah, let me try it again, but remember, I'm, I'm a beginner shooter as well. You guys are all so bad. Okay, so he's using that as an excuse, but Rick has a lot of trigger time on this rifle, and he's been shooting out here a lot. Um, <laughs> all right, do it again then. You got three rounds? Yeah. Bolt must stay open. Is the shooter ready? Yeah. Shooter indicates ready. Stand by. Impact. Impact. Okay, three hits, 10.76. You're noticing he can't shoot until he gets back on target. I think it's that split second of recovery time. Is this going to be worth it? Well, if you're competing at the top level, I think it is because anytime you can save one second or two seconds over the course of 10, 15 stages, now you've gained a 10, 15 second lead on the next guy. So that recovery time, you're giving up barrel life, but I think we're starting to see it here. All right, guys, so Jeremy shoots a 308. We've got some 175 grain, or 168 for this. Gold medal match. Jeremy is very, very proficient with this rifle. It is a shorter barrel. that has an 18-inch barrel. It does have a muzzle brake on it. And we're going to see how he does with the 308. Stand by. That's an impact. Okay. I can't give him that because he's trying to beat my time and he only had one hit. The time was 770, which is still slower, but we had two misses. You want to try that again? You think yeah, you can do it? All right, let's give him three more rounds. Got him right here. Shooter in the cage ready. Stand by. Hello? 
706, but how many impacts did we have? Zero. How, how, how low were they? I can't see. I, just saw I think it was right yeah. under right under the – it's hard to tell from this angle. I have to be right behind you, but yeah. it looked like it was just low. I came down a tenth. Yeah. yeah, and it actually went too low? Yep. You came down, okay. So, guys, I don't know if this shows anything. Um, you know, if you can get that competitor to shoot faster, then he can shoot accurately. Like I said, we did give him a side around. He made his impact. I, I think that six millimeter, just as flat as it's shooting, as less susceptible it is to wind up close, that could be the difference. I don't know. So let's continue with the test. All right, Jeremy, what observation did you make? All right, so straight up observation just between, you know, back to back with the six uh, Creedmoor and, you know, my standard uh, 308. Um, effortless to run, what, an eight second, sub eight second run? It was eight seconds. Eight seconds. Right at eight seconds. Um, I'm getting similar times on the 308. However, I am rushing. I'm, I'm, I'm pressed to get back on target. Um, I'm coming substantially off target uh, during recoil, so it's taking me longer to get back on. That was the first time I have ever run that in a six Creedmoor. I've run it maybe once or twice before. Um, in six five. In six five. So anyway, long story short, it's if I was shooting this gun in a six Creedmoor, I would probably be sub seven seconds yeah. consistently. Awesome. Alrighty, let's continue with it. All right, as much as it pains me to do it, I'm doing this for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our four millimeter. Go we are going to loosen the barrel clamp nut. I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to use my Borka flat wrench. Borka. Borka. All right, my action's open. My barrel is actually still warm. Not so much I can't quite touch it, but it is warm. Okay, here we go on a three second delay. Three shot impact. Uh, so that time was a 670 at 600 yards with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now it's really got me second guessing. Am I just getting warmed up? Am I getting solid on it? Uh, I don't know. But either way, it did beat that initial time out of the six Creedmoor. Have Jeremy run it. Now we're going to have Jeremy run it. Shooter's ready. Shooter is ready. There will be a delay. Stand by. That was a low. I All pulled. right, that was low. 720. So I think we're getting comfortable with the gun. Three impacts, 6.5. He actually was just a little slower than my first time with the 6 millimeter. And I was actually faster than my first time, but he was faster, faster. So this is going to be a tough one to kind of show. I mean, you know, I think the rifle just shoots that well. I don't know. Is, is there that much of a discernible difference to you? There is um, a little bit of a difference on the there's delay, a, but it's minute. It's... Yeah, there's a slight difference, but yeah. to the average shooter, it's imperceivable. You can't, you're not going to notice it. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel any slower. <laughs> yeah, no, and you were faster. You were faster by a second. So, guys, I don't know what all this means, but at least we kind of showed you how all this works. And I know what it means. What does it mean, Rick? It means you wasted a bunch of money on a 6 millimeter Creedmoor when you should have just stayed with the 6.5 like the rest of us. You know, he does have a point, but either way, it was, uh, you know, the beauty of this is, guys, I got a chance to explore something that I'd never messed with before. I'm a little indifferent because the wind at 700, it is gusting up there, and the way it was pushing the bullet around was a little more than I'm used to in the 147 and the ELD. So at this point, I might actually stick with the 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm not going to give up on the other one. I'm glad I got the barrel. You saw how quick the barrel changes were. And it only moves it an inch. One inch from the two different barrels from one my inch. zero. One inch. One inch. Guys, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good one. <laughs> Drink Diet Coke. Uh, Drink Diet sorry. Coke. Lots of it. <laughs> All right, so Rick wanted us to try something. What he said was, let's put Jeremy on the Tika and see if he can be at least comparable to the AI shooting 6.5 against 6.5. Stand by.
Okay, so he had two out of three hits with a time of 8.16. So the thing is, he did miss one, but his time was actually tied with what he did with the AI. I also noticed, personal observation, this rifle weighs less than the AI. The AI is more of a stable platform. You have less wiggle. It's running the same exact bipod. There's no difference in the bipod. He's got the tension set up, but there's a little more hop there. Someone also brought up the point, it's not fair because I'm running the AI with the suppressor. Remember, these have muzzle brakes on them, which are the same muzzle brakes. Cool. Suppressors do help the recoil a little bit, but you're not getting that muzzle blast to help keep it flat either. So there is a trade-off. I, I think it's comparable.